So now we're going to talk about the remainder theorem for polynomials. And when we're asked to find a remainder, how have we been usually doing that so far? Well, we either usually use long division or synthetic division to find the remainder. However, there's a much more easier and quicker way to do it. So with the remainder theorem, there are two cases to consider. So when a polynomial f of x is divided by a divisor of x minus k, the remainder is just f of k. And when a polynomial f of x is divided by ax minus b, the remainder is f of b over a. So the two cases basically differ by what kind of divisor you're working with, sort of like we had in synthetic division. So the use of the remainder theorem is best shown through examples. So I'm going to go through two different cases. So the first case here is I got x squared minus 11x plus 4 divided by x minus 3. So to start off, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use long division to find the remainder. And I'm assuming you already watched the long division videos before this video, so I'm not going to go through too much explanation on how to do this. So if you haven't, make sure you watch those. But uh, yeah, so let's do the long division on this. So how many times does x go into x squared? Well, it goes x times and then x times x is x squared, x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Now when we subtract these, the x rows cancel out, negative 11x minus negative 3x, that ends up giving us negative 8x. Bring the 4 down, x goes into negative 8x negative 8 times, negative 8 times negative 8x is negative 8x, negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. So when we, when we subtract these, we end up getting a remainder of negative 20. So this way we already know how to do. We got a remainder of negative 20. Now what if we took the same example and we use the remainder theorem? Well, first off, we have to figure out which case we're going to use, and that all depends on our divisor. So in this case, our divisor is x minus 3 and it follows the x minus k form. So our k value in this case is three. So to find the remainder, if we're dividing a polynomial f of x, so this x squared minus 11x plus four represents f of x, to find the remainder, we can just plug in f of the k value, which is three in our case. So let's see if that works. So we did it one way here So the polynomial we're dividing is uh, x squared minus 11x plus 4. And let's plug in our k value of 3 and see what we get. 3 squared minus 11 times 3 plus 4. And then if you input this in your calculator, you'll get 9 minus 33 plus 4. And that will give you negative 20 which is the same answer that we got when we did the long division. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's a much more quicker and easier process to get the remainder of negative 20 by just using the remainder theorem. Now let's illustrate the remainder theorem with a second case. So we got 6x squared minus 5x plus 2 divided by 3x plus 2. So as we did in this case, I'm going to do this with a long division to begin with. So 3x goes into 6x squared 2x times, 2x times 3x is 6x squared, 2x times 2 is 4x. Subtract these, negative 5x minus 4x is negative 9x. Bring the 2 down. How many times does 3x go into negative 9x? Negative 3 times, so negative 3 times 3x is negative 9x. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So when we subtract these, 2 minus negative 6 is 8. So our remainder for this division here is 8. Now, what if we wanted to use the remainder theorem to find that remainder of 8 instead, instead of doing all this long division? Well, first we got to find out what case are we dealing with, whether our divisor is in the x minus k form or the ax minus b form. So the divisor that we're working with is 3x plus 2, and it's closest to this ax minus b form. There's a constant in front, which represents this a. However, it's in an ax plus b form. 
So we could sort of manipulate this, uh, this divisor by rewriting it like 3x minus negative 2. So now it's in the ax minus b form. So our a value is what's in front of the x, so the 3, and our b value is what we're subtracting, so this negative 2. So now to find the remainder, all we have to do is we plug in b over a, or negative 2 over 3 in our case, into the x values for the dividend, and we should get a value of 8. So let's try that. So let's uh, find out what f of b over a is, or in our case, b is negative 2, a is 3, so negative 2 over 3. Kind of running out of room here. So plugging negative 2 over 3 into the x values for the dividend, we get 6 times negative 2 over 3 squared minus 5 times negative 2 over 3 plus 2. And I'm not going to go through all the algebra for this, but when you input this in your calculator, you should get a value of 8, which is the same remainder that we got when we did the long division. So as you can see, if you're asked to find the remainder of, uh, of some kind of division, it's a lot quicker to just use the remainder theorem. All you have to do is either find your k value or your a and b values. Uh, sometimes you have to manipulate the divisor like we did, uh, like we did in case two to get it into that form, but it's not too hard. And then all you have to do is uh, sub in that k value or that b over a value for your dividend for, uh, for the x value, plug it in, put it in your calculator, and, uh, and you should get the remainder. The final point I want to make about the remainder theorem is that it only works when the divisors are in x minus k or ax minus b form, and notice that both of them have a degree of 1. So if you have a divisor that's greater than a degree of 1, so if you're dividing by like a quadratic, you can't use the remainder theorem to, uh, to, get, the, uh, to get the remainder. So you got to always make sure in order to use this theorem that your divisors are linear. All right, and it's also a great way to check whether it, when your divisors are linear, whether you're doing your division correctly. So on a test, if you get a divisor that has a degree of one and you have extra time and you're asked to do either long division or synthetic division, you get some kind of remainder, you can always check your answer quickly by using the remainder theorem, just plugging in the k value or the b over a value into the dividend and seeing if you get the same answer. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel right here. Also follow us on Instagram at all things mathematics. And finally, if you feel like there's anything that can be improved on in the videos or you want to see a specific question or concept covered, please leave it in the comment section below. Peace out.